All right, welcome to Becky Live. I'm Becky Andre, and I'm going to be your host for a little bit of a conversation about a particular leadership topic, and uh, then we engage in an intimate conversation afterwards. So my focus with Becky Live is to provide a few frames or ways of exploring a, a particular leadership topic in a way to really expand your awareness and thinking. My hope that this isn't just a consumption of knowledge, rather that it sparks your thinking and you wanna discuss with others around you. Um, and so the frames, uh, this is recorded and so you might be watching this after the fact, um, but the intimate conversation is not recorded and happens when you join me live. So if you're interested in joining a live session, sign up for our newsletter to be notified or follow me on LinkedIn. And both links will be in the comment sections of this video when we post it to YouTube. So today's topic is empathy, one I'm super excited about. Um, and as it kind of came together, as I was conceptualizing and putting the talk together, I got even more excited. So I'm glad to have you here either today or in the future as you're recording, uh, watching a recorded session. So let's jump right into it. Um, today, I'm gonna cover a multitude of different things. I always like to start out with the definition, where, what's the origin of the word and, and what does it actually mean? That can oftentimes tell us a lot. I'm gonna explore three myths to empathy. I'm gonna talk about how one of my colleagues has conceptualized some of the risks of empathy, um, which I always think is an, uh, an interesting perspective. And then we're going to have, I'm going to introduce kind of what's the difference between empathy and compassion. And then um, I'm going to talk a little bit how I think the resonant leadership model kind of brings all of these elements of different ways of conceptualizing empathy together in a really useful model for leaders. So we'll dive right in. Um, empathy uh, comes from uh, feelings, really. Um, and uh, a passion, a state of emotion, really having an appreciation of those emotions. And the origins really came from art appreciation, which I found really fascinating. I didn't know that before. I mean, I've only thought of empathy in relation to people, uh, pe person to person, but it really was uh, first cropping up in the theory of art and how does our ability to view that um, and how does our personality be projected onto that viewed object. Now, the actual definition of empathy is the act of understanding, being aware, being sensitive, or vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of another, of either the past or present without having feelings, thoughts, or experience fully communicated in an explicit manner. Um, and so this is probably the empathy that we're most used to of um, how do we understand how someone else is thinking, feeling, or intending? And then what do we do about that? Now, a couple of years ago, I listened to uh, a talk by uh, the Neuro Leadership Summit. And um, it was really interesting to hear a gentleman talk about three empathy myths. So I have the three myths at the top of the screen. Uh, very well researched and, and uh, he's written a book about empathy. So he has a lot of knowledge and expertise, um, but definitely very much a scientist. And um, so the three myths he talked about was, we, the first myth we have is that empathy is one thing. Um, the second, that empathy is a trait, kind of like something that's genetic or we're born with, or that empathy resides in individuals. And um, he broke them down into what, each of these myths were. And so the first thing is, is that empathy is not one thing. It, it actually kind of it encompasses a lot of different elements in, in how we go about empathizing. And so he broke it down into three different elements of share, understand, and care about. Now share is when we vicariously catch or share what other people are feeling. So we've heard about how emotions are contagious, all right? And so that sharing um, is really useful when we're in situations where we have similar goals or we might think about teams. And so we can rely on that share empathy when we have close knit teams to bring us together. Understanding is uh, understanding what others feel, all right? And this can be helpful when we know that we have different perspectives or we're in some sort of negotiating situation. 
We, um, the third aspect he talks about is caring about. So feeling concerned or caring about what other people are going through. So this can be most useful during difficult conversations where we can say hard things in a very caring way. So the first myth he debunks is empathy is not one thing. It actually shows up in multiple different ways. Some of it passive, some of it, some of it is active and chosen. The other thing uh, that he um, talks about is that empathy is not a trait. It's actually a skill. Um, while there is some truth to the fact that genetically we're kind of like born with elements of empathy, we can also build it. And he talks about in three different ways that the research has shown that empathy as a skill can be built. And if you've done any sort of meditation, you know that kind of that mindfulness practice, um, or if we even look at like yogic trend, 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 uh, traditions or Eastern uh, tradi traditions, we can see uh, that compassion builds, that the, the brain actually changes as we're using breath work or meditation, we actually become more compassionate and connected to our fellow humans. He talked about narrative arts, how, we, how when we learn to care about fictional others, it actually translates to others in our lives, whether they're close or, um, or distant from us. Think about diversity theater, that's a big thing uh, that a lot of organizations are using to help build that empathy of the different ways in which we experience uh, living in, in today's world. Um, management training, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this. There's different ways of which we conceptualize empathy and, and train the skill. I mean, one of the ways that I do is to train people to understand how to respond, listen and then respond with empathy. How do you listen to the fact and the feeling so that the other person feels understood? Um, so kind of he debunks that myth. And then the other myth he debunks is empathy resides in individuals. So we we have this uh, understanding that empathy is just an individual responsibility and it just resides in you alone. Um, and he goes on to share that it really resides in collectives, that humans are some of the most conformist animals on the planet. We dress, think, and feel like those around us. And when we have a culture that rewards or amplifies empathy, it actually becomes magnetic, sticky, and catchy. Um, and so, you know, during COVID, it was interesting to hear people say that emotions were more contagious than COVID. You know, empathy can be the same way. Those, those emotions can, can go through quickly. Now, I have another colleague, Richard Clayton, that takes a look at the risks of empathy. And he kind of uh, outlined three in a, in a LinkedIn post back in October, where he talked about emp empathic, empathetic is what it really should say, apologies for that typo, overwhelm, um, um, sociopathic empathy and cognitive empathy. So I just want to talk about what each of these are. So empathetic overwhelm. So I talked about catching emotions but this can actually increase mental health pressures already on managers. So oftentimes our managers are already feeling burnt out. So when they're, and even post COVID, I've, I've heard this from leaders, um, you know, absorbing those emotions from other people has been a lot. Um, and orgs are kind of emotional hotbeds, especially right now. And so managers who are already close to a breaking point, this can actually take them over the edge. All right. Um, with sociopathic empathy, um, we actually only feel the emotions of people we care about, and we're cold to those that we don't care about. Um, and so we become deeply connected, oftentimes through a shared bond and us versus them. And so when you think about the polarization happening in our world today, you know, we're deeply empathetic with the people that agree with us, and we have less empathy for the people who have differing views and differing elements. Um, and so we're willing to protect our own people, um, and, but we might be willing to inflict harm on other people. And, and we see that in the polarization and, and the discourse. With cognitive empathy, um, it, it's, you're trying to walk in their shoes. So cognitively, I'm trying to use my cognitive skills of perspective taking, cognitive flexibility and sense making or decision making. Um, to help me be more empathetic. Um, now, of course, the downside of this is that you can use these skills to also work out how to inflict harm on groups of people you don't like. So it has um, a negative side as well. And so Dr. Clayton goes on to talk about um, that we 
ultimately don't need empathy. We actually need compassion. And so I want to break that down a little bit. Um, you know, I love uh, what Dr. Clayton said. He said, you know, people don't care shit about that you understand. They want you um, or to feel their pain. They need help in dealing with it. And, and so that's why he says compassion is the key. But if we look at the definition, again, that empathy definition the action of understanding, being aware, being sensitive, all right? Whereas he's right, compassion is more the desire to alleviate it. So it's not just about understanding it. You know, we can be human to human, connect in that compassionate way where we actually have a different set of motivation. So for empathy, our motivation is really to understand oftentimes. And then for compassion, the motivation is really more action. Um, so we've got these three myths, we've got kind of these risks. And one of the things that I keep coming back to is um, uh, a really transformational, and I've met Richard Biazzi's, I've met Annie McGee, um, brilliant researchers that have put together kind of some actionable things that we can do, and they call it the resonant leader. Um, and so it looks at empathy in multiple different ways. And I think you're going to see some similarities based on what I've pre previously talked about it, but it looks at that personal or, and that social competence. Remember, it's not just an individual trait. It's also a collective trait. And they talk about from a personal competence standpoint, being self-aware. So what are my emotions? What is the impact of those emotions? What are my strengths and what are my limits? And um, getting your own understanding of where your self-worth and your capabilities come from. And then self-management, being able to manage my emotions and maybe even my impulses, uh, acting in an honest, integral, and trustworthy way, being flexible in changing situations, having inner standards of excellence. So instead of them needing to come from an external source, they come from internal Um seizing opportunities. So, you know, having initiative and then seeing the positives, uh, you know, we have a negativity bias. So the ability to kind of see the generative and the positives is, is really key to that personal competence. Um, and all of these uh, have elements of empathy to them and even elements of compassion, I might argue. And on the social competence side, they focus on social awareness. Um, the empathy, the other emotions, the perspectives, the organizational awareness, and then even thinking of yourself as being in service to others. And I think oftentimes I see with leaders that they sometimes don't realize that the purpose of a leader, yes, is to accomplish tasks for the organization, but it's also to be in service to the organization and to the people that you work for. And so there's this element of service that we need to really resonate with which can have an element of compassion to it. And then relationship management. How do I motivate and guide a compelling vision? How do I use a range of tactics for persuasion? How do I develop others? How do I initiate and lead change? How do I resolve disagreements? How do I build a web of relationships um, that can help with resiliency or accomplishing things? And then focusing on teamwork and collaboration. And so for me, this really kind of uh, when I conceptualize empathy or being an empathetic leader, to me, it's this broad range of identifying where are the opportunities uh, either collectively for our leaders and our organizations that we need to work on or at an individual level. Um, where, where is that leader strong um, in being a resident leader and where are some opportunities that they need to be working on and then uh, crafting that uh, kind of action plan or that path forward um, in that way. So uh, with empathy, I've talked a lot about talked about a lot of different things, but it really is understanding that there, yes, there is an individual element, all right? And they, there are skills we can develop. There are awarenesses that we can create to help us uh, leverage empathy or even compassion in very uh, impactful ways within our organization. And then there's a collective element, uh, both from you know, we operate in collectives, that social aspect from the resident leader, um, but also an awareness that these are things that can um, be contagious, right? And so if we're not empathetic in our cultures, that's going to be contagious as well. So we have to kind of look at our cultures and see what do we reward and prioritize and for who is also another great question. And, but for me, it's really about building that flexibility, both individually and collectively. 
Um, so about our upcoming events, we have um, in June, I've got two com upcoming events. We've got a learning together where uh, I'm really excited about this. We're going to be learning about management on different planes. So how do we manage information? How do we manage people? How do we manage action? Um, it's going to be a great session. I hope that you can join us. And then uh, on June 16th, my Becky Live is going to be talking about frames. Anytime we're doing any sort of decision making, we have unconscious and conscious frames that we apply to that decision that needs to be made. And so I'm going to break down kind of the impact of that and, and how you can become more aware of the frames that you employ. Um, and I'm going to introduce some new frames that you might want to consider uh, coming in. And then we're going to take a break in July. Um, I, I need a break. And so I think everyone needs a break. Let's enjoy the month of July. And then we'll come back in August with an announcement of some additional offerings. And I just want to thank you for joining me today on a discussion about empathy. Uh, I love to work with organizations to help you activate your potential. So if you're interested in that, here's my contact information to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you and love to support either individually or collectively activating the potential within your organization. All right, I'm gonna stop.